All right, man. I'm going to start the clock. All right. We are looking today very quickly at the Fujifilm GFX 100S. Now, this is a prototype. We got this in for evaluation a couple days ago. This camera is really, really amazing. I'm going to throw the specs up right here for you folks, but it is a 102 megapixel medium format camera, and they made this super, super small. So here we go. Here it is. And right here, I'm going to throw up the Panasonic S1, right? Wow. These things are almost the same size. That is insane. Yeah. And then this is them side by side. You can sort of see that. That looks almost identical in size. That's brilliant. Yeah. And it's crazy too, because whenever we've sat there and talked on the show, we've always said that the Panasonic is a big chunky boy and it really is. So with this camera, Fujifilm went all out. They went to try to make it really, really super small. They packed IBIS into there. There's five frames per second with continuous autofocus. Wow. Which is basically around, I think, what the old Nikon D700 did. So mm -hmm. they're almost on par with medium format as a camera that's a little bit over like a decade old. That's crazy. Um, yeah. yeah, which is fantastic. But yeah. I mean, medium format's gone a really long way as well, too. What I'm not liking about the camera is there is no dedicated ISO dial. Um, uh, more specifically, there isn't really a dedicated like third control dial. There's two. Like right. you have this for aperture, you have this for ISO and manual, and then you have this for shutter speed if you want. Um, and you can name because there's plenty of space there for that. Yeah, and you can reconfigure if you want. But I really do wish that like they had some other extra dial, maybe like. I don't know, like an ISO dial up here. But instead mm -hmm. what you're getting is you're getting a dedicated mode dial on this camera. And Fujifilm went ahead and they Two kept minutes. thank you. Uh, kept the topped LCD screen, um, which still works out very nicely and is very bright and is very easily readable. Fujifilm also packed, you know, the same batteries that they're using in the XT4 in here. And there is still dual card slots, Brilliant. which is fantastic. Another really cool thing about this, besides being really small, besides being in format, besides having image stabilization and 100 megapixels, is they added in a brand new film simulation called Nostalgic Negative or Nostalgia Negative. I'm forgetting the exact name. But either way, it's a little warmer than, uh, than the classic negative, and mm -hmm. it's still a distinctive look. It's very nice. I'm still playing with it, though. And again, this is a prototype. But also, you should note the build quality is fantastic. It's just as weather sealed as the other bodies were. Brett, I know you originally reviewed the original and you didn't really like the plasticky function. This still does feel plasticky, but it's still very good. It doesn't feel as solid as the Panasonic S1. I'll admit mm -hmm. to that. But, you know, I can't really totally complain about this. I'm sure that if it falls, it'll still be okay. It might get dinged up. Right. But I think it'll be all right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I mean, how's the autofocus on this compared to say the GFX 100 original? Fantastic question. This is faster. And also in addition to that too, in low lighting, this is pretty much almost as fast as the Canon EOS R. No way, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's like up there with Canon and Sony. I didn't believe it. And then I just kept trying it over and over again. And I was like, what? It's actually doing this. That's insane for a medium format camera. Medium format cameras in the past have just been slow as molasses. So yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. So that's what I'm really excited about. We're still playing around with it. You can go ahead and check out the full review on the Um, That will be coming later on, but we have first impressions up already. Um, how much time do we have left? We have got 30 seconds. We have 30 seconds. Yeah. What else do you talk about? This camera also can charge via USB-C. Ah, uh, that's big. Yes. And you don't need like an external thing for it. You can just plug it in and it'll charge. And it's great. I tried it myself. I was like, yes. That's fantastic. And it needs to become a standard feature. Period. I agree with you. The last yep. thing I really don't like, this isn't a touchscreen at all. Yeah. They'll get there eventually, I'm sure. But that's that's disappointing. Yeah, but I mean, for under $6,000 and for under the price of the Sony A1, I think you're getting quite a bit. That's 45 Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. Thanks.